Hello, and welcome to the Frog Watch USA graphing tutorial. This web-based tutorial is a step-by-step -step orientation for anyone interested in frogs and toads to explore the Frog Watch USA data and create a graph. Use graphs to discover what kind of species are found in your state. What kind of habitats does a species prefer? At what temperature are species calling at? And more. FrogWatch USA's graphing system is powered by FieldScope, an online data entry, mapping, and analysis platform developed by National Geographic Education, specifically for citizen science programs like FrogWatch USA. The FrogWatch USA graphing tutorial will take you approximately 10 minutes to complete. You can start, stop, and return as often as needed. To begin, let's navigate to the FrogWatch USA FieldScope homepage and click the Graph Data button. This directs us to the graphing homepage. Here you can explore starter graphs which are separated under Explore Ecology and Navigate Neighborhoods or create your own graph from scratch. Let's learn what species are heard in a given state. You can use the starter graph titled Species Heard by State, Massachusetts Example under the Navigate Neighborhoods tab or follow this tutorial to create a similar graph from scratch. Let's begin by clicking on the Start from Beginning link. This page allows you to select the variables included in your graph. There are two variable types numerical variables, and categorical variables. Numerical variables represent continuous scale data, such as temperature. Categorical variables represent non-continuous data that has been recorded in categories, such as habitat type. We're going to select state and species as our two categorical variables for our graph. FieldScope offers five graph types each requiring a certain combination of categorical and numerical variables. FrogWatch USA data is typically reported as categorical variables, so you will rarely create a time series or scatterplot graph because they both require at least two numerical variables. Today, we are making a histogram, which is a bar chart that displays the number of observations for each species. You can learn about the other types of graphs under FieldScope's Help page. To move to the next step, you can either use the Next button or the Step tabs. FieldScope does not require you to follow any order and it is possible to change between these four tabs as often as you'd like and go back to make changes after a graph has been created. For this tutorial, we are going to follow the suggested order. Filters change the scope of the data on your graph. Four filter categories are available. You can use filter by value to show only data associated with groups within a variable, such as spring peepers within species. We are going to use filter by area to show only data from sites within a defined area. Filter by date allows you to only show data within a range of dates and filter by observer can be used to show only observations by a particular group, such as FrogWatch USA chapter. Multiple filters can be combined. Without filters, this graph would display all reported species and all reporting states. We're going to customize our graph to show only Massachusetts and Rhode Island data using filter by area. Multiple tools are available to create area filters. We will be using the State Boundaries tool. You can pan by clicking and drag with your mouse and zoom using either the plus button below the magnifying glass or with the scroll wheel on your mouse. Once we are close, clicking on Massachusetts will create our filter. You can change the name of your filter, but today we will use FieldScope's default. Now I will create the Rhode Island filter in the same manner.
Once we have finished our filters, we need to ensure that they are correctly combining by choosing any selected filters or all selected filters. In this case, the default selected any selected filters is correct. But if I chose all selected filters, there would be zero results. This is because all selected filters instructs field scope to only include observations that fit all of the established criteria. In this case, the criteria are being located in Rhode Island and being located in Massachusetts simultaneously, which is of course impossible. Any selected filters includes observations that are located in Massachusetts or are in Rhode Island. Both options are useful depending on your question. It is important to keep in mind how filters should combine any time you make a graph. Now we need to ensure that the two categorical variables state and species are being displayed properly under define axes and labels. This page allows us to customize the title of the graph as well as the X and Y axis labels. For this exercise, we will leave the labels as the default. We can also manage the X and Y group variables on this page. Anytime two categorical variables are selected, it is necessary to ensure field scope will display them properly. The X axis variable displays along the X axis and the group variables are colored within each bar. This graph is set to display state along the X axis and species within the bar, which is not how we want the data to display. Species should be changed to the x axis variable and state to the group variable. We are now ready to view our graph. This may take a few moments to load, depending on the amount of data on your graph. We can open the legend to learn what the color coding on the bars mean, or we can place our cursors over a bar to bring up an informational box where we can read information about what the colors, the number of observations, and the percent of the total data that each group represents. We can also compare the species composition of the two states using graph settings by changing the bars from stacked to clustered. This lets us see the data from both states side by side. We can also use the graph settings to change the maximum to 600. Now the graph is complete. We can explore the data on the graph using the map and data table. Here, the data is depicted on a spreadsheet. This table has some built-in features to explore the data. For instance, we can click on the title of any column and the table will sort alphabetically or numerically based on that column. Additionally, the count button depicts details of the data, including the number of unique data points under count and, for numerical data, the sum, average, minimum, and maximum. You can export the data table as a .csv file, which can be used in any program that reads spreadsheets, such as Microsoft Excel. We can also look at the data using the map and navigate in the same manner as when we created our state boundaries filter. Additionally, you can zoom quickly by holding the shift key and drawing a box. To see the data associated with a site, we can click on a frog icon and the corresponding information will be highlighted in the data table. As you can see, you can view the map, graph, and data table together. By clicking all of their boxes at once, you can separate them by unclicking any box you are uninterested in at the moment. Finally, to save the graph, we must name it. Let's name this Tutorial Graph. You can choose to share the graph with other FieldScope users, which will include the graph in a stream on the right-hand side of the graphing homepage. 
we encourage you to share any graph you believe others will find interesting. Clicking Save will now save the title and description. To save the graph, we will click on the disk symbol. When you save a graph, it will reload exactly as you have saved it now. You will need to refresh the data to include any new observations. You have now completed the graphing section of the FrogWatch FieldScope tutorial. Additional tutorial information accompanies each of the starter graphs provided.